Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Nisarg Kadam and today we are going to go ahead and look at a very interesting scenario. Now, as you can see on my screen, I am right now on the page of Kaggle. So Kaggle provides you data set for machine learning or artificial intelligence uh, or any data research or for data scientists, it is really useful website. So if you are moreover interested into machine learning or data science, you might know this website, okay? So I found very interesting <clears throat> data set here, which is for a sentiment analysis of a restaurant review. What I did is I, uh, I uh, quickly went through this one. So this is uh, the sentiment analysis restaurant review. This data set is the uh, purpose of this analysis is to build a predictive model to predict whether a review on the restaurant is positive or negative. Now to do so, we will work on restaurant review data set. We will load it into predictive algorithms. Uh, so where uh, uh, so where she has tried, the, the person who has posted this has tried use naive base, Bernal is naive base and logistic regression, okay? And in the end, uh, she's going to reveal all the accuracies and the percentile accuracy which she got. Now, as you can see on screen, she has given the data set. Just, you can simply click on this data set and you can download it. It's in a TSV format. You can change it to CSV or Excel for format if you want to. So she has a consistent of 1000 uh, reviews of a particular restaurant. Now let's go below and let's try to look at what she has built. So she imported the data set and she has given you actually the code and she has designed it right in front of you. And she has also showed the total accuracy, which is gained. Okay. Now she has used here test site as 0.3. Now if 0.3, that means 30% for, uh, as a test data and remaining 70% as a train data. For example, I have 1000 reviews. So 300 reviews I'm going to use for testing how my model is accurately built and 700 are going to be, uh, my training data. So based on the training data, the test data will be uh, telling you what is the exact accuracy that your your uh, particular uh, machine learning algorithm is giving you. Now, as I know, as I move below, I can see that the accuracy gained is seventy seven point six seven percent, where precision is zero point seven eight, recall is zero point seven seven. Now let's navigate to Bernoulli's. So Bernoulli's, she got seventy seven percent accuracy and precision is seventy six and recall is seventy eight. While for logistic regression, she got 76.67. So almost every time the data accuracy is 76 or somewhere around that. But what I did is I simply went ahead. Uh, I saw the all the C, as you can see, she has also mentioned accuracy of the prediction, uh, accuracy of prediction, and then accuracy of prediction for all the different machine learning algorithm that she has used. Now, if you look at this one, so what I did is I downloaded this data. I classified this data into a uh, uh, basically train data and test data. So training data I kept as 80% is because most of the data scientists follow very standard process where train data should be 80% and test data should be 20%. Now this always has been a big fight in data scientists and machine learning developers, whether we want to keep the train data and test data as 70, 30 or 80, 20. So what I prefer is 80, 20 is because I have always got the best results. And also from where I learned, the person uh, or the trainer told that 8020 is the best mechanism to follow. Now that also depends on the scenarios and the machine learning algorithms that you're using, but always follow for data pre-processing 8020 ratio. Okay. Now the next thing I did is I changed the unique, uh, not unique. I changed the values from ones and zeros to one means yes and zero as no. So if a review is positive, yes, review is negative, then no. Okay. So that's all the thing which I did. And then I uh, basically downloaded entire data and then I converted it into CSV and trained it using UiPath's AI fabric model. Now guess what level of accuracy I might have got and which model I might have used. Yes, you are right. I used UiPath's predefined English text classifier model. Okay. And I trained 80%, 20% data. So 80% for training for training pipeline and 20% for test pipeline. Also, as this is a reusable component or retrainable model, I was able to create a full pipeline also, which runs periodically. And if I add more data to my test, then it keeps on updating every time. Now, as you can see on my screen, I simply went ahead and did that in my UiPath's AI fabric. Let's navigate to AI fabric and let's navigate to AI fabric models. So I have created a couple of models out of which restaurant feedback is the one. Let's navigate to pipelines quickly. Now, as you can see, the first pipeline which I executed, this was the training pipeline. 
As you can see here, I gave a train data set and the type is training pipeline. The training pipeline gave me a couple of results. You can download it from here. This is a restaurant zip, which is uh, generated of training, entire training. And once you train, you go ahead for a test pipeline. So when I executed my test pipeline, I got the result of 0 0.975, which is almost 97, not almost, but which is accurately 97.5% of accuracy. Now I'm really shocked is because this machine learning model is also giving me really good score and really good feedback and really good, uh, you know, use when I'm using it in UiPath Studio. Now let's navigate and check. So I, what I did is you might've seen my couple of videos. How can we go ahead and how can we, uh, you know, pull in any specific uh, ML skill from orchestrator or how to uh, load AI fabric model. So let's me select just restaurant feedback. Let's click on test skills. So what randomly comes to my mind is let's say it's a restaurant, right? So I really liked uh, the new dish with the name of restaurant, that's it. So some restaurants have the style to keep the dishes with the name of restaurant. If I test the skill, it should be very positive, approximately with 0.99 confidence. As you can see, it's saying confidence 0 0.54 is because it's kind of a neutral statement, okay? Now let's say I really love the ambience. What it should say. So it's a positive, yes, confidence level 0 0.99, which is really accurate. If I say I really hated the ambience. So hated is completely opposite to really loved, right? So prediction is no with confidence level 0 0.98, which is really accurate. If I say I don't like the Chinese food. I'm really sorry for that, but I'm just saying hypothetically. So I don't really like the Chinese food, but we'll try Indian next time, which is quite spicy. So this time, as you can see, prediction is also no. That means it's a negative sentence with a confidence level of 0.93. So the accuracy of the train set is pretty accurate and it is giving me very good feedback in terms. I can use it anywhere where I want. Really, and now this is really easy for using is because it's just one activity and I can go ahead and train it again. If I just navigate to <coughs> ML uh, and I type ML, if you see upload file, you can literally go ahead and upload this uh, and uh, keep on updating the file in the data set for the test set. You can do that ideally. So as you can see on screen, this is giving me really good accuracy and I have used only one package, which is nothing but if you go to out of the box packages, and if you go to language uh, analysis, you can see English text classification, which is also a retrainable model. Now, as I have created this one, I would like you guys to go ahead and explore some more data set and try to train it with AI Fabrics English text classification for some sentiment analysis and come up with some use cases and let me know if I can create videos on that. And if you really want to know how I created this particular pipeline, how I achieved this much score, then wait for my next video. I'm going to soon release how, to, how you can go ahead and train or retrain with your own data set to this English text classification. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you love this video and happy automation.